Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, CSE 145 Introduction to Computing uh, course at IBM. And um, I'd like to start off by uh, doing a set of in uh, introductions. Um, and then we will do a course overview. And uh, subsequently, we'll start our topic for today. And let's see how far we get. I'm going to be starting from sort of a top-down approach. And I'll start by talking at a high level about what algorithms are and perhaps also complexity of algorithms. So that's basically the objective for today. So um, let's start with the introduction. So my name is uh, Saeed Ghani. Um, and my contact, the best way to contact me is using my email address. Uh, I'm currently a professor um, in the computer science department. And I have been uh, with IBA for about uh, 20 years, uh, a little over two decades. Uh, I was the uh, earlier the chairperson, uh, the earliest chairperson of the department, and then served as associate dean for about 12 years uh, until my um, official retirement last uh, July. Um, and uh, after serving three terms, and now um, I'm mostly mostly in non-administrative positions and teaching. And I also have. Uh, several PhD students uh, and master students doing research under me. Uh, my basic area is in uh, networks and telecoms in terms of my PhD and my research, but uh, over the past few years, I have also started working in the area of artificial intelligence. So I've been te teaching courses in the area of AI, uh, for example, last semester and uh, deep learning, um, that was a couple of times. And if you're interested to take a look at some of my lectures, you will find them online on YouTube as well if you search for my name. Um, so um, secondly, uh, there are four sections uh, in this course, in this mega class. Um, we will inshallah have uh, a TA assigned for each one of the four sections, hopefully about uh, three to four TAs. And um, the WhatsApp group that I've introduced will also give you an opportunity to interact with the TAs, but uh, it'll probably take me a week to finalize the TAs, so I will introduce them um, once they are on board. <clears throat> now, the next thing I'd like to do, um, and um, this will continue on for uh, a little while, for the next three lectures as well, next three to four lectures, is that I'd like to do a round of introductions because um, this is actually the first time we're teaching completely online. I don't know for how long, but uh, perhaps for the entire semester. And so um, it becomes a little bit impersonal. I'm generally used to teaching students in front of uh, in hall and it's much easier to interact. But I would like to make sure that uh, these mega classes are also interactive and have some ideas about that. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to, um, for, for the students, you, the students, to introduce us yourself. Now, of course, uh, with 150 students, uh, if I introduce each one of you, introduce yourselves, it might take uh, quite a while. So I'm just going to focus on one of the four sections, the, small, the, the first one, which is 5776. Um, what I want you to do is uh, I'm going to show you that list of names. So here is the list of names. Uh, tell me if you can, let me know if you can see this list. Can you see this ordered list? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Uh, what I'd like you to do is I'm going to um, expect that each one of you will take just about 10 seconds, not longer than that. Uh, turn your uh, video on perhaps do it a little bit earlier, and then turn your mic on and uh, introduce just your name. So you can say, for example, I'm Hamza Ahmad Zuberi. And then secondly, I would like you to tell me your school, which school you're coming from, and one perhaps key area of interest uh, that you have. And it could be extracurricular, it could be co-curricular. For example, you could say, you know, are you interested in swimming or playing soccer or um, or you have a passion for you know programming or, or gaming or what what have you okay so 
they just take 10 seconds, not more than that. Um, so um, let me hand it over to you. And one more thing uh, before I go too far, far is that these lectures, as you might have noticed, are being recorded. Um, I will be uploading uh, an edited version of the lectures on YouTube. So um, I'm not sure if I'll cut this out or not the audio introductions, but I would prefer it to be there so that you can all be familiar with your colleagues as well. Um, so just be aware of that. And, and I do edit it before I upload it, okay? So let me start off uh, with the, the first student, um, that's Hamza Ahmad Zuberi. And this is only for the sections uh, 5776. So uh, Hamza, please go ahead. The next thing that I'd like to cover is the course outline. And let me open up the course outline. I hope that uh, some of you will have already seen this. Uh, it's been uploaded on the LMS. Uh, you should have an account on the LMS. If you don't have an account, uh, you can drop me an email and try to figure it out as to why you don't have that. Uh, so this is um, uh, four sections, 5776, 577, 5777, 5778, and 5779, okay? Sir, can you please show your email again? Uh, sure. So that's my email, ezrani at iba.edu.pk, okay? These slides will be available to you, will be uploaded on the LMS, but in case you don't have an LMS, you can also contact me via WhatsApp. Okay, I hope that all of you have, if you haven't got the WhatsApp uh, um, connection, then talk to some of your friends and you should be able to join on that as well. Okay, uh, let me also write down my mobile number for the WhatsApp connection. So that is um, 0308 Seven triple one. Please don't call me, uh, but you're welcome to drop a WhatsApp message um, if you if necessary. Uh, and when you do drop uh, WhatsApp messages, remember that I won't know who you are unless you give give me your name and your ERP ID. If you send me an email address, of course that's uh, I'll know who you are. But in a WhatsApp, I won't know unless you specify those things. Okay. So let's take a look at the course outline. So this is uh, a basic course uh, in the computer science department. And the idea is to give you sort of a breadth wise look at the entire area of uh, computer science. So uh, a quick look at a glimpse at what the next four years will comprise of, okay? Uh, this is perhaps the only course which will give you that uh, four year overview, okay? and and it'll also give you an idea as to whether computer science is for you or not, okay? So uh, this is in case you, you, you end up after this course deciding that, you know, computer science is too tough or it's not for me, this is the course that will help you in deciding whether computer science is, is your cup of tea or not, okay? So you can see uh, we'll cover all kinds of topics. Um, you know, the list of topics is given here, number representation, hardware architecture, operating systems, databases, all the way up to, uh, you know, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and so on. Um, now, generally, uh, there is a, a bit of a problem uh, in all freshman courses. I think this is universal, not just at IBA, but worldwide, is that students come from different backgrounds. And I know some of you may have taken computer science at O levels as well as A levels. And some of you may have absolutely no clue what computer science is, okay? Now this course is supposed to be for everyone. So um, if, uh, if those of you who have absolutely no idea and suddenly you, you uh, realize that some of the other students have a lot of understanding, don't get scared, okay? This course is supposed to be for those of you who have no background. For those of you who do have a background, that's a plus, okay? But um, this is meant for uh, students who have no background. So don't be afraid to ask questions. If I'm talking about something which is too complex and other students immediately understand that, don't worry. Ask me those questions and 
uh, I'll try to answer them, okay? Um, now, these are some of the learning of outcomes. You can read through that. Uh, teaching and learning methodology. So uh, this course will, of course, comprise of about 28 lectures, all right? And as I said earlier, you will be encouraged to take part in the discussions. I will have some marks for, for class participation. Um, there will be homework assignments, uh, typically once every fortnight, once every two weeks, and the TAs will be grading them. And um, you'll also get help from the TAs in trying to, um, if you have trouble in understanding the homework assignment or you have no clue how to proceed, you should um, have a discussion, contact the TA, the TAs can conduct tutorials as well to be able to explain things to you. They won't give you the answer. They won't tell you the answer to the questions, but they will help you, okay? As far as homework assignments are concerned and um, group work is concerned, um, I don't mind group work, uh, but IBA takes a very strong um, exception if students cheat, okay? So please make sure that you don't cheat. Now, uh, a lot of students collaborate, right? So you may have three, three or four friends, you sit down and try to work out the homework assignment. That's okay, right? That is okay. However, uh, you should discuss it at a high level. Uh, don't go down. So a lot of these may be uh, somewhat programming assignments or uh, theoretical assignments. Uh, you will be expected to, um, to work out the the details on your own. Now, if we find that two students have got the same, roughly at a high level, similar concepts, that's okay. But if you find that two or three or 10 students have got exactly the same answer, okay? And we have ways to figure that out. So uh, you will get a zero in that assignment, okay? And you will be given a warning. And if you keep making that mistake, uh, there's a possibility you may have get an F in this course, and something even more serious can happen because uh, plagiarism and cheating is dealt with very strictly at IBA. Uh, so please keep that in mind, okay? Uh, reading and watching video assignments will be expected from you. There will be three hourlies. Now, this is a little different from what your seniors may have faced. In the past, uh, there was always a final exam. This semester, because of COVID and the issues we've had in the past with uh, final exams and so on, we will be conducting three hourlies. Each one of them will have equal weight. So in my case, each one of them will be weighted 25% of your grade. They will be approximately, I believe, one hour long. And um, I'll show you the schedule for that. Um, and uh, they will be physical. So you will be expected to come on campus to give these hourlies. So if you are sitting somewhere in a remote region and you're expecting not to come to, to the campus, uh, please keep in mind that you will not pass this course unless you take these uh, hourlies on campus, okay? Um, textbooks, so there will be no single textbook. Uh, there is one specific textbook that uh, I do use predominantly, which is the first one. And I have given you a link to that so you can download it. Um, and if you have trouble, let me know. The other books uh, are not as readily used. Uh, there's a bunch of web resources, which you're welcome to, and these are given from previous faculty members who've taught this course. You're welcome to explore these. Uh, the grading, as I said, 25%, 25% will be based on the three hourlies, 25% each. And 25%, the remaining 25% will mostly be homework assignments and some marks for class participation. And I'll decide exactly how many marks as we go through this uh, in the next few weeks. So that was um, a little bit about, this is the course outline, um, class rules. So during the online lectures via Zoom, you will be expected to be attending each session, uh, preferably with your camera turned on. Now, I know that most of you are shy and right now I can see that none of you have got your camera turned on, but I would like to see you, okay? Um, I don't like looking at uh, names on the screen. I have a large screen over here and I can see about, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, about 25 of you on one screen and I have six such screens. So I can see you, see all of you. And um, 
if all of you, um, and if you show me your faces and I can talk to you, the, believe me, the lecture will be better, okay? Uh, if I'm talking to a blank screen, uh, most professors don't like that, okay? So, um, so, and this is part of the class participation that I expect that you will try to turn your, your cameras on and, and answer questions as well. Um, but keep your mics muted because otherwise there'll be a lot of crosstalk. Uh, only talk, uh, only turn your mic on when you, when you need to answer a question, ask a question or answer a question. Um, okay, so that is pretty much it as far as the class, as the course outline is concerned. Any questions about the course outline? Uh, yes, sir. What are the quiz policies? Okay, so I am not going to be having quizzes. Uh, most likely I'm not. The reason is that I've had quizzes in the past and the quizzes have had a lot of problems because you will not be required to come on campus. And when you have online quizzes, um, unfortunately there is a lot of problems. Uh, students tend to copy from each other, there's cheating issues and uh, it's a complete mess, okay? So I will not, most likely not be having quizzes um, I will be having, um, and the hourly sort of will replace the quizzes, okay? But if, but if we return to campus later? Uh, well, we'll see, we'll see. If, if that yes. happens, we'll take a look at that, okay? But right now, that is not part of the plan. But this is, you know, the because of COVID, a lot of things um, are not 100% clear as to how things will roll out, but um, we'll see how things go, okay? Any other questions about the course outline? This course is purely theoretical? Uh, no, it's not going to be purely theoretical. In the past, this course used to be four credit hours. And uh, one credit hour was completely a separate uh, three hour per week session, which was lab based. Uh, last year, that was finished. Uh, can you please turn your mic off when you not speak? Because there's a lot of noise. OK, yeah, thanks. So. Um, now this course is essentially theory. So when you see three over here, it's basically three credits of theory. However, the homework assignments will, will be based on programming as well. Now this course is a primarily a theoretical course, okay? Um, and there's an introduction to programming course as I'm sure all of you are aware of, that is the programming intensive course, okay? And that's I think four credit hours. So in this course, uh, you will not be focusing on programming as such, okay? But uh, having said that, um, I will be expecting you to do some programming and I'm going to be using Python as my language. And the reason why I'm going to be using that and th that's not throughout the course, it'll be a little bit of exposure during probably the first or second homework assignments so that you get an idea as to what is, um, Python is relatively simple, okay? And I'll show you if I get time today, uh, I'll show you um, some some of the features of, of Python. Um, so um, this is not uh, a completely theoretical course. As I said, there will be some hands-on as well. So one of the first in the first homework assignment, you will be asked to install uh, Python IDE. Okay, and then there will be some assignments like that. Right. Um, any other questions regarding the? Yeah. Yes, sir. Um... Sawagam, will you be uploading the other uh, reference books on the LMS? I have seen one of them on there. I will upload one more uh, that is easy, that is available. Uh, some of the others are not necessarily available. Okay. And if you go through some of the links, uh, you will find that some of the course outlines will be downloadable from there. Okay. Okay. Will you then send us the list of the whole resources thing? Uh, I will try to, uh, so I will give you some of the links, okay? Some additional ones. And if I don't, okay. uh, drop me an email or a WhatsApp message and I'll try to do that, okay? Okay, thank you. Right. Any further questions as far as the course outline is concerned? Okay, yeah, so if not, uh, okay, so there are, there's, People who are uh, texting on the chat session, um, I may not be looking at that all the time. So if you really need 
to ask a question, I would prefer if you just uh, do it on the mic, okay? So that was the uh, course outline. Um, now let's get back to the, um, so this is the semester schedule. I hope you can see this uh, online. And what you'll see is that there is a schedule already there for the hourly. So the first hourly will be in September to uh, first October. Then the second hourly will be here. It'll be somewhere during that particular week. And it will be in the class uh, science session. So there will not be any, hopefully any conflicts. And the third one will be in December after the last class is, is completed, okay? And there are faculty evaluations and results, all right? Okay, so- um, Excuse yes. me, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, in that, doc that document uh, you previously showed us, that was also sent to us. Uh, at the bottom, there was this comprehensive exam. Uh, can you tell? That, that's not for you. Um, okay. Okay, that, the comprehensive exam is just, just something for the seniors, okay? MBA students and PhD students. Yeah. Okay, so let's begin. We, um, how much time do we have? We've got time, okay? So let's begin with the, uh, the first topic of this course. And um, a lot of times different people focus on the course in different ways. If you look at the book, it may start off in talking at the hardware level, okay? My approach when I've taught this in the past as well, and as well this time, is it's going to be a little different. I'm going to do it a little bit uh, starting top down, and I'll try to focus on perhaps one of the most important aspects of computer science, which are, which is algorithms, okay? And we're going to be talking about algorithms for perhaps the next few lectures, and we'll talk about different aspects of, of algorithms and complexities and, and so on, okay? And then I, what I'll do is, as and when we, we come across uh, issues which you need to know at a lower level, uh, we will go down to the lower levels, to the hardware level and to the bits and bytes as and when necessary, okay? So um, first question that I'd like to ask you, and I'd like people to just, uh, Turn on the mics and try to answer this. So, what exactly do you understand from algorithms? And uh, perhaps those of you who've been exposed to computer science will be better at answering this. But and and try to give me um, answers with some examples. So, just go ahead. Sir, steps to do a specific thing, for example, like booking or anything like that. There is, uh, I don't know why there is a positive feedback of echo coming in. It could be because um, you are, your mic is, you have a speaker on and it's feeding into your mic, okay? So if that is the case, then you may want to put your speaker off before you turn on your mic, okay? That will resolve this problem. So turn off your speaker and then turn on your mic, okay? And please tell me your name because uh, sometimes I'm not sure who is actually speaking. Okay. Uh, sir, my name is Omar Ahmed. Okay, Omar. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sir, basically, algorithm is uh, is our steps to do some uh, specific tasks. For example, like cooking a recipe uh, requires a set of steps. So we call that we can call that algorithm. Similarly, okay. computer understands some steps. There are some steps in making a program. So those steps are called algorithms. Okay. Excellent. So as you already gave an example, uh, so think of, um, so these are some of the examples, you know, recipes, as, as you said, uh, long division. I mean, if you think about the way you conducted long division a long time ago, I don't know if you still do it because everybody has calculators, but that was a specific algorithm. You, if you wanted to divide two numbers, there was a specific set of uh, steps that you would follow, okay? Uh, if you think about search algorithms, okay? So for example, if you have, a whole bunch of numbers which are unsorted. Uh, and if you're trying to find where a particular number exists in that list, then that could require a specific algorithm to be able to solve that, okay? And that would depend on whether uh, the number, the, the original list is sorted or unsorted, okay? Now, are all algorithms the same? Uh, I mean, for example, if you think about the recipe, uh, your mother might be cooking something and it might take a 15 minutes 
and your sister uh, who might be doing cooking the same thing or your brother uh, might be taking an hour to cook the same thing, right? So uh, are those two algorithms the same? Would you rate sure. them the same way? That is well, not really. Not uh, really, right? No, sir, no. Because they would be different. And why would they be different? How would you compare the efficiency of an algorithm? Uh, so everyone right. has their own way to do something and set of instructions, different set of instructions. No, but uh, sir, how would you the length, the length of the algorithm? The smaller it is, the better it is. Time. So the faster okay. the algorithm processes the instruction, the better, the more efficient it is. Okay, good. Uh, so I know when many of you are trying to speak at the same time. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to try and experiment with is that because I'm also going to be marking class participation, what I will, and I'll make this a little bit more uh, method, method, methodical next time, is that I will focus on one particular section in a particular class. So for example, today uh, we can have uh, students from 5776 uh, trying to participate, okay? Uh, students in, uh, and if, of course, you have, if you have a question, anybody can ask. But when I ask a question, I would like only students from 5776 batch to be to answer, okay? And when you answer, just um, if, if, if uh, just prefer, pre preferably say your name first and then answer, okay? So uh, again, so my question is, how would you gauge the efficiency? How would you measure if two algorithms are one is performing better than the other? And think about cooking as a simple example. Sir, there are multiple ways to compare them. Now, one of them is the processing time, which takes this one that takes the least amount of processing time. It could be the length of the algorithm, how concise it is. Okay, so these are good. a couple of factors. And how good the output is, like, is it in the form that you want? Okay, very good, very good. So, you know, if you're cooking something, does the food taste nice at the end of the day or not, okay? So basically what you're saying is, if I, if I give the example of cooking, uh, how much time does it take? Whether it's taking an hour or whether it's taking 15 minutes and whether the one that's 15 minutes, does it give the right answer? Does it give the right uh, answer at the end, okay? Is it solving the problem correctly or are you getting something else? What else? Uh, so time is one thing. What could be other measures of, uh, yeah. So how much time and how many resources are being used? Resources, very good. So uh, again, cooking example, if one person is hogging the entire kitchen, okay, uh, and the other person is only taking a small portion and they're both taking the same amount of time and they're both equally good, then which one is actually better? The one that's probably taking less space, okay? So uh, in computing, of course, space is not measured on in terms of the kitchen space, but it's measured in terms of how much hard disk that you're taking, how much memory you're taking, okay? So these are two primary ways that you measure the, comp the efficiency of an algorithm, okay? Um, now, if you, if you think about um, these, these two aspects, um, would, all algorithms take the same amount of time. So for example, if you uh, run the same algorithm or if you, if you cook the same recipe five times, uh, it might be, you know, the first time it might be taking 15 minutes, the second time it might be taking 30 minutes. So how do you gauge which, uh, which parameter to use? Should we take the average? Should we take the minimum? Should we take the maximum? I think the maximum. Okay. So yes, that's a good answer. Generally, you look at the, the worst case scenario. Okay, so you see, uh, um, you know, in the best case scenario could be very small, but you generally look at the worst case scenario when, you, when you're looking at the efficiency of algorithms. All right. Um, so why would the same algorithm take different times? Okay, so we look at examples and I'll show you why that is the case. Okay, but uh, if you think of anything in real life, so when, when you do something, I mean, think about, you know, just going back to the simplest example of cooking, when you, if you cook the same thing, or if you're playing another game, if you're playing, um, you know, playing chess, or if you, if you are playing soccer or what have you, all right? If you're trying to do any activity, there will be a variation, okay? And it will depend on a variety of different components. 
So if you're cooking something, it would depend on perhaps what you're cooking and what time of day it is, how tired you are, uh, what resource you have available. And if you, for example, if you're sorting a bunch of numbers um, or if you have a bunch of numbers and you're trying to find out uh, whether a particular number exists, then if that, and if you start in a linear search and we look at that as an example, if the, the number that you're searching for is the first number that you that in the in the in that list, then obviously it will take you one just the first time you look at it, you'll find the answer. But if it's the last number on that list, then it'll probably take you longer. Okay. So we'll we look at uh, further examples as well. Um sir, may I be yeah. excused for a moment? Yeah, sure. Sorry? What is is that a question or did you say something else? Okay, anyway, so um, so here's my first example. And this is an example of unsorted numbers search. Okay, so suppose that you have a list of unsorted numbers. Okay, so these are unordered numbers. And you see that um, there's a list and it consists of 10, three, five, 26. You can see that there is no specific order in this, okay? And um, and by the way, uh, I'm going to be using Python. So uh, the it's a very simple language, and uh, you can see that it's fairly natural to understand. Okay, so I'm defining a list, which is simply a list of numbers. It could be a list of uh, your hobbies. It could be a list of student names or what have you. Okay, so suppose that these are a list of integers. Now you can perform different operations on this. For example, uh, you can say, what is the length of this list? Okay, so the length of this list right now is five, right? One, two, three, four, five, it has five numbers in it. And let's call that N. N is the length of this list. Now, what we're trying to do is, we, what we'd like to do is to search the list for a number X, and this is a variable, okay? So let's say, for example, the X is the number five. Okay, so as a human, we can simply see that we can just look at this and we can see that this number exists in this list. Okay, but computers obviously don't work this way. Computers simply look at numbers and you have to specify an algorithm for them to be able to figure out whether that number exists in this list or not. Okay, and you have to be able to specify a very specific algorithm to be, for them to be able to find that number. So we'd like to search the list for X and if X exists, we're going to respond with a true, okay? And we would also give the position of that. So for example, in this case, uh, if you're looking the, for the number five, we would respond with uh, the number, well, um, this would be, let's say the third position. So we could say it's in the third position, all right? Um, now, this list can also be, um, can be indexed, so, so you can think of indices of this list. So you can say that uh, the zeroth element, and you'll find this often in computer science, that you often start with the number zero, okay? So if you think of this uh, list as being indexed by the variable i, then i would start from zero. So list zero would be the first element of this list, okay? List four, one would be this one would be three, uh, two would be here, three would be this one, number 20, and list four would be the number six, okay? So that's how you can actually figure out uh, what are the contents of this list, okay? Let me ask something. Yes, sure, go ahead. So, so why does it have to begin from zero? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, it, you don't have to, uh, but, it's, it's sort of uh, done in all the languages that I've seen, okay? And um, I can't give you a very precise answer as to why zero is used, uh, but at some point you'll realize why it is. Um, when you look at the bits and bytes, you'll understand that if you, if you look at the binary representation of a number, then uh, it starts from the number zero, okay? All right. Right. And then it will go to zero one. And this is something we'll, we'll talk about later on. This will be zero, this will be one, this will be two, and this will be one, one. This is called binary representation. 
So if you start with the number one, you're actually not using these two, this number, okay? So that's why it's traditional to start from the number zero, simply because it's more efficient. I can ask the question. Yeah, sure. Sir, let, me, uh, let me know your yeah. name because again, um, yeah, is that Omar? Yes, Omar okay. Ahmed. Okay. Sir, if we will be using for next loop uh, to find the number, so we will be giving it, uh, starting it from zero or from one, like for n is equals to one or for n is equals to zero to four. Yeah, so you're sort of jumping a little bit ahead because I haven't introduced some of these terms and I understand you might be familiar with those, but I want to take the entire class along, okay? But quick answer to your question is that you would start from n is equal to zero, okay? Thank you but I don't want to lose the other students. So basically um, the, the idea is that can we write an algorithm which does a linear search? Okay, so what, we, what we're trying to do is trying to find out if, if we want to find whether the number five exists uh, in this list, the question is how would you go ahead doing it? Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Doesn't, does it not require to be sorted? Like for example, in linear search, we find a number when the list is sorted. So is it not necessary? Okay, good question. So uh, the thing is that there could be two different ways of presenting the data. Now, if you think about your phone book, right? Uh, when you open your Android or iPhone, uh, all your the contacts are listed alphabetically, right? So it's a lot easier to search in that because if you're looking for somebody in Z, you're not going to start from A and start searching. You're simply going to go and jump to the number, to the alphabet Z, okay? But the problem with that is that it requires pre-sorting, okay? Now that takes extra effort and it takes time to actually sort it beforehand. So there, these are pros and cons that we'll, we'll discuss. But now assume, so now just assume that we are giving you data which is not sorted, okay? Somehow you've got a bunch of data and it's not sorted. And now I simply, my, your challenge is that you're trying to find out a particular number and trying to find out whether that exists in that unsorted list, okay? So that, excuse me, so that's actually your challenge. So now my question is, can you figure out an algorithm, uh, and by algorithm, I'm talking about it at a very high level, how would you actually conceptually uh, do it? So you can access individual elements of that list, uh, and you can go through this entire list. Um, how would you go about doing that? Would somebody like to suggest? Um, high sir, level? Yeah. Uh, uh, we would um, search each index one by one and compare it to our variable. And in case the value of the variable is matched, uh, we could mark it, mark a Boolean true or false, or like mark any other variable true or false. Okay. So let's try to uh, let's try to address that at a level where everybody can follow. We're going to write a high-level algorithm. And this algorithm will basically be what is referred to as a flow diagram, okay? So we're going to start off at the top, start, all right? And what we're going to try to do is we're going to use um, a number i, which is going to be referring to the index, okay? So we want to start off by searching through this list in a linear fashion. By linear fashion, we mean that we're going to look at first the number at the zeroth entry, and then the second, the the element, the first element, second element, third element of this list, and the fourth element. Okay, so the way we could start off is we could say, let's say we have an index. We're going to start it off by i is equal by setting it to be i is equal to zero. Okay, now i, as some of you are referring to, is what is referred to as a variable. Okay. I can take on different values um, and you can change this. So we're going to set i to be equal to zero initially. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check whether the zeroth element of this list is actually our solution. So we could say is list i 
equal to x. Okay. And generally, when we write something like that, we're going to put it in a box, something like this. Okay. Um, and there could be two possible answers to this. One could be a yes. One could, the other could be a no. Okay. If the answer is a yes, then do we have the answer to our problem? If we start off with list zero, and let's say that we're looking for the number, not five, but the number 10, then obviously it's going to be at location zero, at the zeroth uh, entry of this particular list. So clearly we have an answer. We've got our result, we're essentially done. And we can say that uh, it is true. Okay, so the number X does exist. And we could say that we could print the value of I, we could say that I is equal to zero. So we found the number right over here, okay? But if that's not the case, and in this particular case, clearly that's not the case because we're looking for the number five and it is not at the zeroth entry, okay? So it's going to be a no. Uh, what do we do now? So we increment uh, the value of i. Yes, sir, i is equal to i plus. Okay, so we're going to set i to be equal to i plus one. We're going to increment i, okay? And then we're going to go back over here and repeat this loop, okay? So we're going to go back over here and keep rep repeating this. So now i is equal to one, okay? And is L1 equal to five? Uh, clearly no, because this L1 is equal to three. So again, the answer is going to be no. We're going to increment i, and now i is going to be equal to two. Uh, next, we're going to say is list of two equal to five. And the answer over here is five. So the answer is now yes, and we're done, and we're going to say i is equal to two, okay? So this, uh, at a very high level, is essentially a very simple algorithm, okay? Now- so I have two questions. Yeah. So the first is, uh, if say, because we have five digits over here in the list. Yeah. If say the list is much longer with like 50 numbers, yeah. Would it make it more efficient if we were to order them in increasing order first? Absolutely. So now uh, these are different, there are different algorithms. Uh, and just by logic, by intuition, you can guess that if this was an ordered list, surely you could have done a lot better. Okay. But first of all, before we actually say, what does better mean? We have to actually ask ourselves the question. And this is sort of um, a better uh, view of the algorithm that I just wrote down. We started with uh, setting i is equal to zero. We compared, and I'm using now the notation of Python. Okay. So in Python, uh, when you want to set a variable to a particular value, you say i is equal to zero. Okay. So basically what you're doing is this particular val variable is now has the value of zero. When you put two equals two, it means you're doing a comparison operation, okay? So comparison operation could be, for example, you're saying L of I is just a short version. The list of I is less than X. You could say, is it greater than X? Or you could say, is it equal to X, okay? So this is how Python operates. There are a lot of other languages. Uh, if you're learning Java in your introduction to programming, it will be somewhat similar, okay? Oh, sir, uh, I have a question. Yeah. So in Python, is list a data type? Yes, it is. So um, we'll, we'll talk about data types later on, but yes, a list is a data type. And I'll show you a Python program if you get time today as well. Okay. Okay. So thank you. I have a question. G. Yeah. Uh, can you explain what, what's meant by high level, high level languages and low level languages? Because sometimes people think that high level is more advanced or something more difficult, while it, that's not necessarily the case. Okay. So generally, a high level language is one which has a high level of, of abstraction. In other words, for example, if you um, if you look at C plus if you look at C, one of the oldest languages. It's a very low level language because 
you can actually work at a very low level. In other words, you can actually access the bits and bytes inside a computer, okay? And you can actually access register levels. Um, I'm, I'm answering this because you, you asked this question, but this is not for everybody because we're going to go through this as you go through this course. In a high level language, generally you can't access low level register values, okay? But we'll talk about that uh, later on when you actually understand, most of the class understands what I'm talking about, okay? Okay, thanks. Right. So uh, when I when I say- but Wouldn't be low level languages more efficient compared to high level languages as computer can understand them easily, I guess? Okay, so let's not get into that debate because you're going to lose uh, all the students who have absolutely no clue what you're talking about, okay? So I presume some of the students do have a background in computer science and I don't want to focus on areas which we're already going to cover later on, okay? So let's let's stick all right. with. The... All right, I have a little silly question. Yeah. What does uh, what does list i less than x or greater than x mean, and why would the why would like the algorithm care? Okay. So if you think about what we're trying to do, if you if you try to logically see what we're trying to do, is that if you if you forget about computer science for a minute, okay, I give you a bunch of numbers. 10, 3, 5, 20, and 6, let's say they are cards, okay? And you can't see these numbers, all right? The numbers are written on the other side of these cards, okay? So you have to flip it over to be able to see that this, the first number is 10, okay? You have to flip this over and then you see that this number is three and so on, okay? Now I give you five cards and each one of them is, is upside down. You can't see the numbers and I'm, Telling you, and I'm asking you the question, um, can you find out whether this list of cards has the number five on any one of its faces? Okay. Who was the student who asked this question, by the way? So that I can see who it is. It was me, Tarek Iqbal. Tarek Iqbal, okay. So, um, so basically, uh, if you're trying to find that out, how would you do it? So the, you've got five cards and you're trying to find out whether one of those has a number five on it. Flip them one by one. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. I haven't gotten to the, uh, to the greater than or less than, but when you flip a card, what you want to see is whether the contents of that card match with the number that you're looking for, right? And that's what we're doing over here. So what we're saying is that- But if the number, yeah. But if the numbers are random, then won't it not matter what the number is? As in, uh, wouldn't it not matter then if the first number is 10, which is greater than five, and the second number is three, which okay. is less than okay. five, because- Just hold on a second. I haven't gotten to greater than or less than. That was just an example to show you that uh, these are operations that you can perform. I haven't talked about this, okay? I'm not using this in this algorithm. Notice that, there is no less than or greater than uh, when you're comparing these numbers. Okay. There is a greater than over here uh, and I haven't gotten to that as yet. Okay. So in this operation, basically what we're doing is we're sim simply saying that is the number on the card equal to the number that you're looking for. Okay. Is that clear, Tariq? Yes, sir. Okay, so if it is equal, then you have your answer, right? So if you look at the first card, no, it's not equal to, you look at the second card, it's not equal to, you look at the third card, it is equal to the number that you're searching for, then you don't have to look through the rest of them and you can just stop searching and you can say, well, I found the number that I was looking for, okay? Now, there is something that over here that I didn't really talk about, okay? Now, why do you think that this operation is over here? So earlier we, we spoke about this algorithm and we said no, and we go, go up and we go through this loop. But um, what's the problem with this algorithm? Sir, it's for the exception that uh, if someone puts the number eight and uh, in the list there's no number eight. So yeah. we cannot yeah. just uh, uh, be in the loop. We okay. have to try to be outside the loop. So okay, very good. So basically that's a termination operation, okay? Because in every algorithm, uh, there's a starting point 
and then there is an ending point. So for example, if you think about cooking, if you're trying to cook something, obviously there's a starting point where you start cooking and at the end, you've got to stop, right? You're not going to indefinitely keep on cooking. If you're searching for a number, uh, there has to be a, a mechanism to be able to stop the algorithm because if you don't, then that operation, the computer is going to keep on going forever, okay? So the problem with this algorithm over here is that it doesn't know when to stop, okay? Is there a way that it can actually stop? So if you, for example, looking for the number eight, then it's going to go all the way till the end and it's going to look, look for beyond this index. So it's going to look, look for list five, right? Now, when it starts looking for something which is not inside this list, guess what happens? There's an error. Go an infinite loop. No, there, it actually doesn't go into, it doesn't go into an infinite loop, it generates yeah, an right. error, okay? It generates an error because it tries to access something. It tries to access the sixth card. And when you've only given it five cards, okay? It's, it's that kind of thing. It's looking for the sixth card, but the sixth card isn't there. So it's actually going to get, give you an error, okay? And the program is actually going to abruptly stop and give you error, the kinds of errors that you often come across when you're writing a application, when you're running an application and all of a sudden it gives you an error and, and just suddenly stops, okay? All of you, I'm sure, have experienced that in your mobile phone when you download a program and you download an app and suddenly it crashes, right? So that's what's going to happen. It, it'll crash and burn because uh, you, you look for uh, something which was not given that list, okay? And that's, that's why it. it's important to be able to stop. And there was not an earlier question, I think. Hafsa, did you have a question? So if there would be uh, two fives in the list, so what would be doing? How okay. we, because good, good point. So if there are two fives, tell me what will be the answer. You tell me. Yes, I'm just asking this. Okay, think about it. can somebody answer that? Sir, the the first one which you saw. Yes. Sir, the first one. The first. Sir, one. in this algorithm, yes. the only the the output would be only one five and the program would stop, I guess. Exactly. When exactly. it will find the first five. Exactly right. So there are two fives, it will find because you're simply going through uh, a linear search, okay? You're going from one end and you're going to the other. If you're looking and there's another five over here, for example, if this was a five, it wouldn't find this, it would simply stop over here. It will say, here's my first five, okay? So sir, how would you uh, find the other five? So this algorithm would not. If you want to find all the fives, then you have to write a different algorithm, okay? Oh, okay. But in, this, in this algorithm, all you're trying to find is whether <laughs> that number existed or not, okay? And where does the first uh, number in that list appear starting from the lowest side, okay? Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, so- um, so, can you, so can you give an idea that how can we can rearrange this algorithm to find out the another five, fifth number? Okay, so that's something that we'll talk about in one of the other lectures, okay? But let's just focus on, on this problem. It's a good question, but we, that's a topic. That's for another topic uh, of another lecture. Okay, so, thank uh, you, sir. Yeah, so if you look at this, basically what this is doing, this operation over here is doing, is it's making sure that if when i is greater than or equal to n, if it is not, then only do you go back, okay? If i is, is equal to n, you've gotten to the end of that particular list, okay? And then you've got to stop and you say, well, in this case, the result is false. I wasn't able to, for example, if, you, if x was the number eight, as I said, it would simply go through this entire list. And at the end, it would say, well, I've gone through this entire list and now um, there is no number five, there's no, there is no number eight over here. So I'm going to give the result as false because the number does not exist in this list. Okay. So that's a simple example. Now, before we stop, uh, let me just see how you could modify this. If, for example, you wanted to do a reverse search. Okay. So the idea now is that I want you to modify this algorithm so that instead of starting from i is equal to zero, it starts from top down, okay? 
Sir, I is equal to five, and we will do sir, minus in terms of. Sir, I is equal to four. I is okay. equal to length minus. Sir, so um okay so we yeah, need I to... is equal to n minus one. Right? Okay, so I think we'll have to make sure that five people don't start speaking speaking at the same time. All right. So I would appreciate if the person who wants to speak first says their name, and then goes ahead and answers that. And um, other people don't cut them in until that person is spoken. Okay, so the first person who gets the mic should continue. Okay, so. Oh, uh, so sir, so you Sabri. Yeah. Yeah, I think I is equal to four, and uh, instead of I plus one, it would be I minus one. Okay, very good. So this is remain the same. No, it's going to be I is equal to I minus I is equal to I minus one. Okay, very good. And that, what would be the terminating condition? Um, I don't think I can answer that. Anybody As else? I equal so can I do less than zero? Yeah. Sir, I will be less than zero. Yeah, very good. So I less than zero would be a terminating condition. In other words, you've gone all the way up to here. You start from I is equal to four, three, two, one, and zero. And when I, is, comes out to be you've decremented i and now i is minus one. Uh, clearly, if i is less than zero, then there is no list l of minus one. No. Okay, this does not exist. Uh, yeah, there's a point. Uh, I wanted to ask could it not be i less than equal to zero? Okay, so can somebody answer that? Should it be i less than equal to zero or i less than zero? Less than zero. So, yeah, it is in Less than zero, right. It's going to be less than zero because i is equal to zero is actually an index. Okay, so list of zero does exist. Okay, so uh, it will be i is less than zero. All right. So uh, this was a simple example um, of doing a reverse search. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, sir, in the last one, uh, the yeah. one before this, wasn't the greatest sign uh, redundant like useless because uh, five is not you know uh, part of the list like i equals to five does not exist okay. so good, good, good point so the question is do can it simply be i is equal to n why do i need to say i is greater than equal to n all right and uh, in short this is correct so this would work okay but generally it's a good idea to make your conditions a bit more general, even though it may work in this particular con condition, but let's say uh, you modify this algorithm and um, you're doing something different and you somehow you ended with I is 20, okay? And when N is equal to five, let's say. So in that case, that algorithm would fail, okay? It would give you, it would crash and burn. So you generally want, it's a good idea to make it a bit more generic. It doesn't hurt to put in a greater sign, but you're right, it isn't strictly speaking, it isn't actually required in this algorithm, okay? But they're good practices of programming. Yeah. Yeah, sir, I wanted to ask uh, whether we be uh, putting the initial value of i or is just a loop? Uh, so, Anfa, is that the question? I'm not sure, I didn't quite get your uh, Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I was asking whether we need to put the initial value of i or it will just start from zero itself. Okay, so good question. So the question is that, um, do you need to specify the initial value of, of i in an actual programming language or do you just assume that everything starts from zero? Okay, no, everything doesn't normally start from zero. Okay, as you uh, look at, uh, uh, you have to, uh, specify what the initial values are because uh, inside your memory, and we'll talk about this later on as well, the initial value of I could be some random garbage, okay? It could be some number, uh, you know, any, any random number. So if you want to make sure that you want to start from zero, you have to explicitly assign a value. That's always true, okay? I, think I have I, a question. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely true. So I missed that. And you would start by saying uh, x is equal to five. 
uh, perhaps you would actually enter that from the from the user what value of x you want to search for so some of these things i've sort of haven't given you so even the values of l would have to be specified and x would have to be specified so good good point but i'm sort of neglecting some of these details okay and so but, and what is the class timing and uh, the class ended one minute ago so we've got gone uh, over time so um, I, um, I I, so the class for, let me just end the formal class because i know some of you may have other commitments however for those of you who would like to stay on and ask questions i have no issues you can ask me as any questions as you want okay but the formal class is now over thank you